Hello and welcome to the class Finding Reliable Health Information on the Internet presented by Taylor Community Library. My name is Barbara and I'll be presenting today's class. Our program object objective today is to find health information on the Internet that is reliable, reputable, and non-biased. Since this class is focusing on good information that is reliable, reputable, and non-biased, I will begin by giving you an example of bad information for each of these categories so that you know what to look out for when you're searching for information. Later in the presentation, I will spend a fair amount of time focusing on one particular website that is great for all types of health information. I will also share with you several websites that focus on specific types of information, such as our current coronavirus health crisis. However, before I show those examples, I need to refer to the following disclosure on health information. Consult with your doctor. It's important to remember that staff at Taylor Community Library are not doctors. We can show you ways to obtain information on health issues, but we do not determine if the information applies to your health issue. Taylor Community Library staff does not diagnose conditions or recommend treatments. Any information provided to you by Taylor Community Library staff should be thoroughly discussed with your physician. That includes information that we may supply to you or information you find using the sources that we share with you. Okay, let's start our presentation. First off, what to be cautious about. Many of the .NET and .com websites that you visit are going to have very good information. However, some of these sites can be non-reputable, non-reliable, and biased. Anyone, including you and me, can purchase a .NET or .com website and post whatever we want to it. It doesn't mean that we are experts on any information that is posted on that page we purchased. It only means that we purchased a domain or website and that we posted some information there. So in other words, there are thousands, even millions of .NET and .com sites. Most of the sites are going to be great sources of information. However, quite a few of these sites contain non-reputable, non-reliable, um, and biased information. So with that in mind, you will need to try to determine if each page you're visiting has good, reputable, non-biased information on it. So let's talk about non-reliable information. I read a news article about a website where you could submit health questions and a doctor would post back with what he felt was wrong with you and his suggestions for treating the condition. Well, first off, the information was not reliable. And because of that, serious health repercussions could have developed. You see, the person who purchased the domain was, and was posting health information on it and diagnosing patients was not even a doctor at all. In fact, he was a 15-year-old boy. It's scary to think of how many people he may have diagnosed while pretending to be a doctor. So let's talk about non-reputable information. Don't believe everything you read on the internet. A library co uh, patron contacted me at a previous library that I worked at. They said they had read on the internet about an all-natural supplement that could lower blood sugar in diabetics. This supplement was being promoted by a physician. They wanted me to do some research for them to see what other information I could find out about the supplement. Well, I could not find any information about the supplement. In fact, the only reference I found to the supplement was that which the doctor had put on the internet himself. I could not find anything in any books or anywhere online. So this made me curious about the company that was selling the product. So I did some information on them and I found out that they had hundreds of complaints with the Better Business Bureau regarding their unethical billing practices for many of the different products they sold. Once the free trials were over, people tried to cancel, but their accounts kept being charged. People returned supplements with instructions to cancel and still their accounts kept being charged. 
It was impossible to stop these charges. So then I wondered why any doctor would associate himself with such a company. So I did some checking on him. Well, the doctor was licensed in three different states. He had disciplinary action against him, and his license to practice medicine had been revoked in all three states that he had been licensed in. So yes, it's important to remember, don't believe everything you read on the internet. Now, what about biased information? Well, it's not quite as bad, but it's still something you wanna be careful about because you can find a fair amount of biased information on the internet. Many websites will provide information about a topic or product in which the information is accurate, but the facts have been twisted or skewed to have a better angle on it to make it seem better than it is. This information can be biased. On this example, I visited a website in which, in which a company is talking about smoking. They are offering facts about the safety of smoking and their safe smoke-free alternatives to smoking. This is good in the fact that having an alternative to smoking can be better for you than cigarettes themselves. Or is it? The news has been filled lately with people whose lungs are severely damaged and deaths have even occurred from people choosing smoke-free cigarettes also referred to as vaping. So can the use of these products help someone to taper off smoking altogether? Possibly. But I'm checking to see who owns the internet site. It's actually owned by a major tobacco company. And when it comes to the bottom line, isn't this company's main focus to sell their products? So if they wanna sell their cigarettes, whether regular or smokeless, they aren't going to come right out and tell you how bad the products could possibly be for some people. So you do need to be careful and check who owns the website and what benefit they may have from putting that information out there. Well, how can I tell who owns a website? On most reputable pages, you will find the company name that owns the page. You can research the company then to find out more about them. Uh, not necessarily on their page, you can search them and see what other people are saying about them. It's a good way to find out if, if they're reputable or not. You should also be able to find a section on the page with copyright information and, a, and about a us section to tell you more about the company. If this information is missing, you may not want to use the information on that website or at least you might want to do further checking before you decide if that company's um, a good company and that the website is going to be reliable, reputable, and non-biased. So where do we begin? If a website domain ends in .gov, then the site is a government site. The U.S. government has spent a lot of money to create in-depth health information sites to keep its citizens informed so they can find the health information they need and use that information as a talking point with their physicians so they can make knowledgeable decisions. If a website domain ends in .edu, it's an educational site. Now with this in mind, you want to use .edu domains that belong to higher education sites, not elementary school or high school, etc. The ones you're looking for are typically university sites, especially those with medical schools. Look for the larger institutions with links to major medical facilities, also known as university hospitals. Here in Michigan, the University of Michigan and the Wayne State University are good examples. There are also many national sites such as Johns Hopkins and the University of Washington. Now, .org sites are mostly all good sites. However, occasionally these can be biased. So you just want to make sure who owns the site. An example of a good site would be either Mayo Clinic or the Cleveland Clinic. As for hospital sites, you'll have the best luck looking at the larger university hospital sites. Sites that work with universities such as University of Michigan Hospital System, Beaumont Health System, Henry Ford Health System, or the Detroit Medical Center. In Southeast Michigan, these are the larger university hospital systems. 
There are also a lot of associations out there that have great websites. For instance, if you wanna find out more about Alzheimer's disease, you can go to the Alzheimer's Association website. But there's one problem when searching for information and going directly to each of these sites. It's a very time consuming and you would have to dig and search harder for the information you want. There's a better way to search all of these sites at one time and that's by using a search engine but not just any search engine. So let's talk about search engines. Not all search engines are created equal. The search engines listed here are great for general information, but not recommended for health information because they do not sort out the bad information. These types of search engines search for all information, regardless of whether it is reliable, reputable, or non-biased. So you get lots of good information, but you're also gonna get the bad information too. In other words, when one of these search engines does a search on the topic of your choice, it's designed to search all over the internet and bring you everything that it finds. It's not designed to sort it out or determine what is what. It's designed to bring you everything. In most cases, this is good, but not when you're searching for reliable health information. You only want to find the good stuff and not the bad. But to help with this, the U.S. government has developed another search engine specifically for health information. This is a highly recommended website. MedlinePlus.gov is a website filled with lots of useful information, including a section that can be used as a search engine. This search engine only searches the types of websites I listed as good sources of information. It searches .gov, .edu, .org, major hospitals, and associations. This is where I recommend starting all of your health information searches. MedlinePlus.gov is, as I said, the place you should go for your information. But before I show you how this website can be used as a search engine, the next few slides are gonna focus on some of the specific information that can be found on this website. You'll notice that the website has many different sections to it, including a search engine. So let's go through several of those other parts of the website. What if you wanted to find some brief, quick information about a condition or disease? Let's say you saw a news article about a child abuse case and the parents were stating that the child was not abused and that the child has osteogenesis imperfecta. You're not sure what that is. You just want a quick one or two sentences that explains what the condition is. You could find that using the medical encyclopedia. You can click on Medical Encyclopedia and it will bring you up an alphabetical search option. Even if you're not sure how to spell osteogenesis imperfecta, you do know it begins with an O. So you can click on the O and bring up a list of options that begin with the letter O. As you browse the list, you find osteogenesis imperfecta. You click on it and a definition will appear. You can now see that that is a condition in which someone has extremely fragile bones. Now that be, might be enough info to satisfy your curiosity, but if not, simply click on the click to keep reading button for more information. Now, what if your doctor told you that he wanted to have a test done? Let's say he told you you need to have an electrocardio, uh, electrocardiogram. You're pretty sure you know what that is, but you want to confirm it. So you click on medical tests. Again, you can use the alphabetical search option by clicking on the letter E for electrocardiogram. This will bring up a list of tests and you can search for the word electrocardiogram. Once you see it in the list of options, simply click on it. That will reveal information about what the test is and what the test is used for, as well as any other types of information regarding the test. 
Now let's say that your doctor tells you you need to have a surgical procedure called angioplasty performed and you want to know a little bit more about that procedure. Well, let's see if a video is available. Click on the section that says video and tools. Once you do that, you'll notice that you have two options, one for specific topics and another for random topics. Click on the top one for health videos, and this will provide vi videos on specific topics. It'll bring up a list of available topics, and you'll notice that the videos will be limited here, but you can see that balloon angioplasty is one of the available videos. If you click on that, a short video will appear that you can watch that kind of gives you an idea of what's entailed in having that procedure done. Now let's go back to this uh, video and tools page again. The other option that was listed underneath the uh, health video specific topic area were, was the Medline Plus videos under that are random topics. Medline Plus creates videos on various topics that they change on a regular basis. These are posted here where you can check to see if any of the videos that they currently have posted are of interest to you. If not, check back on a different day and you should see a different selection. On this particular day, four videos were available. One on naloxone, one on cholesterol, one on using antibiotics when you're sick, and the other on how gluten affects celiac disease. These are usually well put together videos and they can be very interesting to watch. Now let's move on to drugs and supplements. If you want more information on a specific drug or supplement, you can look it up here. Let's say your doctor told you to start taking metformin and you want to have a little more information about the drug. So you can visit the Medline Plus page and click on Drugs and Supplements. When you do that, it will bring up that alpha list that we talked about. And from there, you can choose the letter M. And from there, you can look through the list until you find Metformin. By clicking on Metformin, you can see that the information um, is available about how this uh, prescription is totally typically prescribed, how to use it, any precautions with it or dietary instructions. You can also see side effects it may have, as well as several other types of information regarding it. Now let's get back to the Medline Plus page and look at the health topics section and the search engine section that we talked about earlier in this presentation. Let's say that you know what you want to look up and you want to find everything you can on that topic. In this scenario, you just found out your sister was diagnosed with interstitial cystitis and you want to learn more about it. So you can either type the words interstitial cystitis up here in the search engine box and then click on the go button, or you can click on health topics. Let's click on health topics. That takes you to a listing of health topic categories. Well, you know this is a bladder condition and you look through the list and you don't find it. But you know that the bladder is part of the urinary system, so let's see if we can find something on that. As we're going down, we see that kidneys and urinary sy system are put together as one, so you can click on that to get more information. At this point, you'll see a bunch of choices on that topic. Now remember, you could have simply typed in the words interstitial cystitis in the search engine box and gotten to the same place, but I did want you to see that you can go in by certain parts of the body to look at different things that could affect those parts of the body. So you'll notice that unlike other search engines, the, this one breaks the page into sections. On the left are options to refine your search. 
in the center of the page is a description of what the condition is. Below that, you will notice that you get a list of results that are very similar to that of a regular search engine such as Google. But here you notice that the results are a total of 68 options. These are websites that have been vetted by the government to contain reliable, reputable, and non-biased information. Running this same search in Google brought back about 4,120,000 results. Now, do you have time to go through all of those results to pick out the best ones, the reliable, reputable ones, non-biased ones? Probably not. That's why using Medline Plus is your best option because it does all of that work for you. Now, going back up to this box in the center of the page, the one that gives a brief overview of the condition, if you notice down here, there's this little words that say read more. If you click on that, it will take you to additional options for information. Here you will see different sections that you can click on to find what you're looking for. And depending on where you'll click, keep click you'll get a different set of options. Um, in this one, it says start here or go to symptoms, or go to dia diagnosis and test, or maybe you can jump right down to treatments and therapies, um, what to do if you're living with this condition. So it, it gives you a lot of information and it takes you right to the areas that you want to be in. Now at the beginning of this presentation, I mentioned that I would share some additional sources of information with you. There are too many sites to share them all, but I will go through some that I think you might find helpful. Now, don't worry about trying to write down all these web addresses for all the sites that I'm gonna show you because I do have a handout available. If you go to the library website page and click on library events or the library calendar and open this particular event, you will see a file attached with all the links as well as a few other you know, sites that I'm not going to be talking about today. If you don't find that, simply click on the contact us or ask a librarian and tell us that you need the class file and give us your email address and we'll get it right to you. The site that I'm showing you here is the CDC or Centers for Disease Control. This is the place to go when you're looking for information on any type of infectious disease or contagious disease. This is the best place to find reliable information on the coronavirus. They have information on how to protect yourself, what to do if you contract it, what the symptoms are, how to slow the speed of infection, as well as a lot of additional information. I'd like to caution you to only use reputable sites when getting your information on any type of health issue, and especially right now during this COVID-19 pandemic that we're facing and going through. Right now, Facebook and other social media is flooded with false news and incorrect information. So-called doctors, hospitals, and healthcare workers telling you what to do, how it's contracted. Please keep in mind that although some of this information might be good and reliable and accurate, a lot of it is not. A lot of that information is false. One example is the Johns Hopkins Medical Center information letter that's going around right now on social media. Johns Hopkins did not put that out there. Someone used the hospital's name to promote false information. Some of the so-called facts in that post have been proven to be completely inaccurate. And some of the other information that was stated in that post has yet to be proved. So we don't know if it's accurate or not at this point in time. And this is only one of the many, many posts out there with inaccurate information. Social media is filled with hundreds, if not thousands of them. You need to be smarter than that and go to the source, a reliable source for all good information. And as it relates to the coronavirus or any other infectious disease, the Center for Disease Control is the place to go. Now, these next few websites I'm going to go through somewhat quickly. 
Um, in addition to national government sites, most states have their own sites for medical information. In Michigan, the site to go to is the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services. This website focuses on both medical and social is issues that are related to the citizens of Michigan. And if there's ever a you know, crisis going on, they try to um, put information out there that focuses on those specific issues. You can see on this example here, there is definitely information on coronavirus disease, the COVID-19, and also um, opiate use disorder, which is just an enormous issue right now facing us in, in the state of Michigan, as well as across the nation. In addition to national and state medical sites, many individual counties and larger cities have their own sites too. Here is the Wayne County, Michigan website for health, human, and veteran services. So please focus on using these types of sites when you're looking for reliable, reputable, and non-biased information. Avoid getting your information and spreading or forwarding information you find on social media. Now I'll show you a few for information on any type of toxic chemicals. Taxtown is a good place to start. Finding information here can be a little bit harder. You kind of have to dig through the website a little bit to get to what you're looking for, but the site does offer quite a bit of good information. I decided that I wanted to look for information on lead in drinking water. I did find it here, but not where I expected to find it. I found it under sources, then schools, then lead, where they went on to talk about, you know, lead and the drinking fountains and that type of thing. Uh, it had very good information that you could use and relate to other things other than water coming through the drinking fountains. I also looked for pollutants that can cause asthma. And I found it here, but I had to search first under diseases and condition, then asthma, and then I went to buses. And they had a really interesting section on um, how the pollutants from buses can affect, you know, children with asthma or anybody who rides a bus even to and from work, I guess this would apply to. So there was some very good information, but like I said, you do have to dig a little bit more for it on this site. Another website that can be useful is clinicaltrials.gov. This site lists any privately or publicly funded clinical trials that are being conducted around the world. Possibly you want to find out if a clinical trial is occurring right now with a new treatment for a specific type of cancer. This would be the place to look for that information. Many conditions are hereditary. And if you want to find more about the genetics of a disease or condition, Genetics Home Reference is a really good site to search for that. There are several good places to find some good anatomy diagrams. This is good if you want to see specifically where a bone or a muscle or an organ is located at within the body. Here I've listed the SEER training modules from the National Institute of Health Cancer Institute. I've also listed medlineplus.gov slash anatomy and Body Basics from Nemers Kids Health. And the Nemers Kids Health site actually has some very good anatomy diagrams. If you're, you know, trying to look for something there, don't think that only children can use that site. It's a very good site. Healthfinder.gov has a lot of valuable information, and it also helps to give you a lot of good talking points for um, when you're gonna go to the doctor and um, you wanna talk to him about certain things. It helps to give you ideas of what kinds of questions you might wanna be asking your doctor. And, and there's a lot of other information besides that too that is found on that page. Now, a minute ago, I talked to you a little bit about Nemers Kids Health when I was talking about the anatomy. I want to tell you a little bit more about this site. It offers information for discussing health information with your children. It has a section for parents, which focuses on how to talk to your child about health conditions, and also information about different conditions that can affect children. There is a kids section that presents health information at a child's level. 
and a teen section, which offers a little more information to teens on health conditions. This enables teens to become more involved in their healthcare decisions. And then there is also a section uh, that educators can use. Now, as I told you at the beginning of the presentation, it is very important to remember that the staff at Taylor Community Library are not doctors. We can show you ways to obtain information on health issues, but we do not determine if that information applies to your health issue. Taylor Community Library staff does not diagnose conditions or recommend treatments. And any information that is provided to you by Taylor Community Library staff or information you find using the resources that we share with you should be thoroughly discussed with your physician. Now, here's a little bit of information about where to find Taylor Community Library. We do have a website page, and all of these links are on that handout that I talked to you about earlier. So there's a link to our website. We have a Facebook page. We have an Instagram page and we have a YouTube page. So these are the different places that you can find Taylor Community Library. And when you look at that handout, you will find the links for all of these. Well, I thank you for joining us today. I hope that you found this presentation to be helpful. We would appreciate any comments you would like to give back to us. So you can, you know, post on our, um, Facebook page or on our web page and let us know what what thoughts you have about the presentation. Thank you again. Bye now.